Hi, Mr. Pierce here. We're going to be looking at differentiation today, and I'm going to be trying to introduce this very powerful mathematical technique for you. Um, one of the things, one of the many things that differentiation does for mathematicians, scientists, engineers, is um, it helps us find the gradient of a line or a curve, or in fact, almost any function you can think of, um, differentiation can help us find the gradient of that particular function. Um, here I have a straight line and of course the gradient of a function really corresponds to the, the slope of the function at particular points. Um, and you can see at, 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 this, at this point here the, um, the gradient of the function is actually 2 because for every one across uh, we have to go two up, so the gradient's two for this fu for this function at this particular point. Of course, if we if we were to take this point, uh, the gradient would also be two because for one across we also go two up, and maybe at this point the gradient would be two as well because for one across we go two up. So for this particular line, the gradient is actually always two at any point on the line. If I was to change this and was to maybe change it to say three x minus mi minus 2 then as you can see the gradient at this point on this line is actually 3 and of course if you were to take this point the gradient would be 3 as well any point on that line the gradient would be 3 so for lines it's actually quite easy anyway to find the gradient however if we were to look at curves then it's, it's slightly more difficult so let's have a look at a curve and see what, this, see what the gradient is of this. Well, here I've got a simple x squared curve, and as you can see, I've got the point 1, 1, and you can see that the gradient at the point 1, 1 is 2. Okay, for 1 across, we've gone 2 up. I know the scale on this graph actually looks a bit strange. It looks like this, is, this, this length looks bigger than this, just because of the scale of the, the y-axis to the x-axis. So the gradient of this, of this line at this particular point is 2. You notice that I've drawn a line through the point, and this this has got a special name. It's called a tangent to the curve. It's a line that only touches the curve at this particular one point. Okay, so the gradient of the tangent at the point x equals one and y equals one is two. Okay, and because the tangent touches in only that particular point of the curve, then the gradient of the curve at the, the point one one is two. Okay, so. As you'll notice, if I drag this point across, you'll notice the gradient changing. So it's not at all like a straight line in which the gradient was always constant. It was always the same. I mean, for example, if I leave it on the point 2, 4, then the gradient here is 4. Um, if I leave it at the point, say, 3, 9, then the gradient is 6. Okay? And if I, if I go... If I go to maybe minus 3, 9, then, oh, let me just get on to that, minus 3, 9, then you can see the gradient is minus 6. So the gradient is changing um, for this particular curve. And as you could probably imagine, for many curves, the gradient is not constant um, for, for all the different points. So let's try and analyse what happens as we change, as, as we change this point um, and see what happens to the slope of the line or the gradient as we do it. So at 1, 1 the gradient is 2. So when x equals 1 the gradient is 2. At 2, 4 the gradient is 4. So when x equals 2 the gradient is 4. At 3, 9 the gradient is 6. So when x equals 3 the gradient is 6. So as you can see what's happening is that the gradient always seems to be double the x part of the coordinate. Okay, So we're going to investigate that a bit later on in the next video. So please stay tuned for the, for the next video and we can, we can build on that concept. Thanks a lot. Bye.